Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Kremti News at 6 o'clock. I'm Tom Sherry. Mark is off tonight. It's good to have you here tonight. I'm Whitney Ward. We want to get straight to some breaking news at this hour. The Spokane Police Department is actively investigating a shooting at the West at a West Spokane apartment complex. Our Morgan Trow is live at the scene. Morgan, what can you tell us? Whitney, Tom, we don't know too many details, but we do know that police officers are saying that this could be a robbery turned shooting. And officers told me that they located the victim and he's being transported to an area hospital for potentially life threatening injuries. But I spoke to a neighbor who said that this kind of crime doesn't happen here. It's like, wait a minute, you know, crime in this neighborhood is usually really low when it comes to this kind of stuff. You know, it's a shock that someone got shot. Police say the scene is under control and they are actively investigating. The police say the suspect or suspects left by foot and anybody with any information regarding this incident is encouraged to call authorities. Reporting live in West Spokane, Morgan Trow, Crumb 2 News. Thank you, Morgan, and we'll continue to track those developments yeah. throughout the evening. We also now know what caused the death of a North Spokane mother who was killed in her home on Sunday. The Spokane County Medical Examiner confirms 35 year old Cassie died from multiple stab wounds, and it's important that we're saying we are only using their right. first names at this point, and that is for privacy for that family. But they're calling the manner of death a homicide, and the suspect does remain in police custody at the hospital. So tonight, the community is invited to a candlelight vigil to honor Cassie's life. Creme 2's Amanda Rowley joins us with those details and who's expected to attend. Amanda? Good evening. The candlelight is expected to begin here at Franklin Park at 730. Candles will be provided here at the tent behind me and organizers are encouraging those who attend to wear a mask. They tell me this event is meant to celebrate the life of Cassie and shower love on her family who are also expected to be here. In fact, a family who knows the pain of domestic violence will be here tonight as well. You may recall the heartbreaking story out of Newman Lake about Tina Stewart. Three years ago, her boyfriend was sentenced to 16 years in prison for her murder. Tina's uncle, Don Estes, became an advocate for Tina's law. It's a bill that would create a registry of domestic violence offenders. The bill failed to pass in 2019, but he hopes it will get reintroduced next legislative session. Now, Don's wife is Cassie's cousin. He says something needs to change and believes Tina's law could help prevent future domestic violence. Women and men are getting involved in relationships and they have no idea that their perpetrator had a domestic violence or a violent past. It's, com it's so common and, and these perpetrators just keep getting out and reoffending and look what happened now. You know, Cassie's no longer with us. So it's important that we continue this fight. John tells me his wife and family are still devastated over Cassie's death. He says she was a sweet woman and a wonderful mother. Now, Cassie's co-workers are the ones organizing the event tonight, and they tell me you don't need to bring anything if you do plan to attend, but it's okay if you'd like to bring some flowers or cards for the family. Now, again, the event starts at 730 tonight here on the west end of Franklin Park. Reporting in North Spokane, Amanda Roldy, Creme 2 News. Amanda, thank you tonight. Also, a man accused of killing his girlfriend in Spokane Valley entered into a plea agreement. Daryl Cloud was charged with first degree murder in connection to the 2016 death of his girlfriend, Candy Feely. Now, Cloud entered an Alford plea last week to first degree manslaughter. And according to court documents, the prosecuting attorney recommended he serve eight and a half years, followed by 36 months of community custody. He's scheduled for sentencing on April 30th. He was previously arrested for domestic violence against the same woman in 2009, but that case was dismissed. She was then killed in July of 2016. Cloud also previously served time for killing his former middle school teacher. That was in January of 1994. Cloud said she sexually abused him for 10 years. Mm. An update now to the breaking news that we first told you about at four and five o'clock tonight. State Route 27 is back open now after a 15 acre brush fire shut down uh, the highway from Palouse Highway to Dishman Micah Road. It marked an early start to the season for firefighters. They tell us wind was a big factor today. Uh, first crews arrived, said that they had a wind-driven fire, was on both sides of the road, and they called for multiple resources. 
So there is no word right now on exactly what caused this fire, but crews will remain in that area to monitor any hot spots. As you can see, they had air support there as well today. They will continue checking those same spots throughout the night. Mm -hmm. But certainly we want to talk about the wind because we know that was a factor. Sure. Very early start for firefighters, but certainly not uncommon. And the wind just makes things more difficult. Yeah, we had wind gusts to 40 miles per hour today out at Spokane Airport. 32 mile an hour winds down in Pullman. 40 mile an hour peak wind gust up in the Deer Park area. I'm happy to report to you that we're looking for decreasing winds by the time we get into tomorrow. Right now you can see wind out at the airport is out of the east northeast at 16 miles per hour. Still pretty comfortable air temperature though at 16 63 degrees. When we talk about what you've got going on for your day plan or forecast, we'll go from 60s to 50s, mostly clear skies, decreasing wind overnight, down to about 38, uh, 67, the expected high on your Thursday. And as we head into the weekend, my gosh, I've got sunny skies Saturday and Sunday, 73 on Saturday and 74 on Sunday. But a cool front moves in on Monday. That will bring more gusty winds. Ah. We'll talk more about that with your 10-day outlook coming up in a few minutes. Sounds good, Tom. Thank you. Well, tonight, the board for Spokane Public Schools will review the results from a massive survey that asked people what they think of a new proposal to build a downtown stadium instead of at the Joe Albee site. Our Casey Decker has been following this story. He joins us now with a breakdown of what we know. Casey? Well, this saga has been going on for years now, so let's start with a quick recap of the timeline here. In 2018, voters approved a huge half billion dollar school bond that included $31 million to replace the decaying Joe Alby Stadium. In that same election, Spokane City voters said in an advisory vote they'd prefer the new stadium to stay in the same location. And a few months later, the board voted to go with those voters and authorized a new stadium at the Joe Alby site. Now that design phase for that project is complete and contracts for construction are due to go out soon. But business groups who still want a downtown stadium came back with a new proposal to build next to the Spokane Arena. This one had more details about parking and it they say it will save the district money. The board wanted more public input, so they held two virtual forums and launched that online survey. Now we're getting a look at the results of this survey. More than 7,700 people weighed in, and you can see here more than 5,000 of them in some way expressed support for the new downtown proposal. That echoes what we saw in the virtual forums where nearly every speaker was pro downtown. A lot of folks like the central location and they feel like it'd be better for accessibility and for the economy. Still, there are plenty of people who want the project to remain in Northwest Spokane. And common arguments for that, that advisory vote, parking concerns, and the effect the downtown stadium could have on the nearby Spokane Civic Theater. The Civic already suffers from event traffic, parking competition, and noise pollution. All of that is prior to being sandwiched between three enormous buildings, like the house in Pixar's Up. The proposed stadium will exacerbate existing issues in ways that its proponents appear unwilling to discuss or even acknowledge. I mentioned that in that Facebook vid video there, he is speaking only for himself, the theater as an organization not taking a formal position on this proposal. So anyway, tonight the board will review and possibly discuss those survey results, but there is no action item listed. In other words, we're not expecting any sort of vote tonight. However, this may be our first real opportunity to see what the board members' thoughts are on this proposal, and they don't really have much time left to make a decision given how far along the existing project already is. Whitney, Tom? feels like I'm making a difference, right? Uh, and it makes me feel good. Well, Washington healthcare workers are going to great lengths to deliver COVID-19 vaccines to some of the most remote areas of the country. We've got this incredible story coming up right after the break.